look at that. Let me see. What's got these guys so excited? Unbelievable. Player's Choice Games for N64. Turok, Mario Kart, Wave Race, Star Fox. Oh, man. Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire, Cruise in USA, and Super Mario. So I'm in love. Each one of these great games is just $39.95. What's going on here? And each one is a million seller. Just look for the Player's Choice logo. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to my quick look at the fruit of gr gr Grisaya? Grisaya? I don't know. Uh, thank you to Kaiser Sani for getting this game up as a uh, quick look, or rather a player's choice. I decided on the official name for this series uh, through my Patreon. If you're interested in having me play a game, you can do it as a one-time payment on there, and boom, I'll get it. And I'm excited to do what people want. I've heard of this game, and I know it's an anime, but my knowledge of what it actually is, is nothing. It's apparently a visual novel, it was on sta sale on Steam when I went to get it, so that's pretty cool. This is the all ages version, because it's on Steam. There is a patch if you want that other stuff, uh, but other than that, uh, I think there's like, s on Steam there's like seven games or something on there, there's a lot. If not seven games, then seven things in this series, so it's pretty big! Uh, before we go, let's go to the config sound. Okay, we got characters here. We can put the stuff up. Okay, as usual, we're gonna put background music down, sound effects down, voices at max. That's what I kind of like. This song's real good right now. This is a real good song. Uh, so we have all the girls here that we will not probably all meet in the first little bit. Um, other than that, this is a good UI. Let's get started from the beginning. Intense sunlight blazes down on the road as if to declare the arrival of summer. Ah, the sounds of cicadas, my favorite. Okay, spacebar does not advance. Spacebar is a hide. Got it. The burning asphalt radiates heat, mixing with the scent of the tide to form a thick, muggy atmosphere. Uh, by the time this video goes, no wait, never mind, it's going up tomorrow. But I'm gonna be in Japan pretty soon and I'll know what it's like, because it's gonna be like 30 there. It's way too early for this kind of weather, and when the temperature's abnormally high, you always, you're always gonna get some people who lose their heads and start acting erratically. In other words, it's only natural that the police would be on the lookout for suspicious types at times like these. Yo, we gonna start by getting arrested? It was about 10 minutes ago that I realized I'd been mistaken for one of those heat stroke adult sorts. <sighs> Oh, we're getting arrested. Sweat pouring from his forehead as he examines my license. The policeman in front of me tries to take a glance at the large backpack I'm carrying, then continues the background check. Yes. I told you this 10 minutes ago. I'm moving. This luggage is everything I own. Like I said, I don't have one yet. The answer is not going to change no matter how many times you ask. To be fair, this is really suspicious. Where did you come from? Where are you going? What are you planning to do there? Depending on the context, these would be fairly philosophical questions, but as far as police inquiries go, they're pretty run of the mill. From their perspective, anyone wandering around without clear-cut business is by default a criminal of some sort. Let alone someone like me carrying around conspicuous bulky luggage. It's as good as guaranteed that they'd stop me. That is their job, I suppose. Since this little scene acts as a crime determined through its visibility, it's not entirely wasted effort. But unfortunately, I don't have all day to play along. I drop a glance toward the digital watch I'm wearing around my left wrist. Sorry, but I'm keeping someone waiting. I really can't spare any more time hanging out with bored cops. Ah, uh, that's not- yeah, but don't do that. Bo a bored police force is proof that the city's at peace. Take it as a compliment. Inexplicably taking offense at my tone, the policeman clicks his tongue in irritation and tosses my license back. Alright, slamming my hand down with a prediction, there is going to be an actual human in my bag. I refuse. 
何か見られたくないものでも入ってるの刃物とか持ってない I don't rely on blades. <laughs> Bud? Buddy? Don't say that. That's not a good thing to say to police. Policy of mine. Look, are you really telling me to unpack all of this on the spot? It'll take an hour at least. 30 minutes just to take it all out. 30 minutes to stuff it back in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 I just told you I don't have the time. I can't accept voluntary questioning. I know you just can't back down in this situation, but if I say I'll head over there myself later, could we wrap this up for now? As I've explained, I'm in the middle of a move. I vacated my old place so I don't have an address. I don't have any parents, no siblings or relatives either, they're all dead. Really? Is there something you're doing? This is going nowhere. If you come to the police, I'm not sure. Then at least, let me call the person I'm supposed to be meeting. At this rate, They'll be waiting all day. I'm not going to tell you that. It's your mo- Oh! Oh, dang! Yo! This won't go well. It's your mother. We had an appointment at a hotel tonight. Huh? I was keeping quiet out of the goodness of my heart. You dragged out of me, so don't blame me when your parents get divorced and your happy home is shattered. That's rough, buddy. Whoa. About 30 meters from where we're talking, someone screams. A desperate cry follows within seconds. Hey, actual crime, go do that. A woman sits collapsed on the street, stretching out her hand. Her high heels lie on the ground, knocked off her feet by the sudden fall. Just about halfway between us, there's a man in a flashy Hawaiian shirt running this direction. Hawaiian shirt? Really? <laughs> Although the thief flinches for a moment at the sight of the policeman's uniform, after a quick check for any convenient side streets, he barrels onwards. <laughs> Brandishing the stolen bag menacingly, his hand violently gestures out of my way. <laughs> the cop is completely flustered. He's quite clearly unaccustomed to this sort of situation. While he's panicking, the distance between us and the thief shrinks with surprising swiftness. The man runs in a straight line toward a breakthrough to freedom. I happen to be standing directly in the middle of his path. As he prepares to strike with the bag, I ascertain the movement of his shoulder and arm for the first signs of motion and hit his wrists sharply just as he begins to swing. The man's arm instantly stiffens and loses all momentum. His eyes pop wide open in shock. I immediately grab the collar of the Hawaiian shirt he's wearing and firmly draw him toward me. Before the man can offer resistance to my pull, I smoothly reverse and use my body weight to shove against him. Tetsuzanko? When pushed just as they've begun to brace themselves against being pulled, anyone except a genuine expert is going to be thrown off palance. Did I say palance? Boy, should have had another coffee this morning. Nice shirt! Where'd you buy it? That was kind of lame. I'm gonna be real. That was a little bit lame, my man. Shock spreads across the man's face as his knees buckle against his will. I try to gain a chokehold using my grip on the neck of his shirt, but... The man promptly draws his head back and stiffens his body to the side, preventing me from landing a hold on his neck. Although I expected as much from a glance at his build, it seems like he's somewhat experienced in judo. But... In this case, you would have been better off trying a defensive tackle, or decisive tackle. Rotating around the purse snatch in the opposite direction of his slide, I yank his right arm upward with both hands. In one movement, I've circled to his back. Oh, it literally- that is a literal Hawaiian shirt, huh? Next, pull back on the opponent's wrist and elbow and pin him to the ground. This is just basic Aikido, by the way.
Hey now, you've got your priorities all wrong. Before worrying about me, you should kill the guy who sold you that shirt. Yo! Okay, that's kind of cool now. He, he goes back and forth between cool and not. Perhaps unconsciously, the man's now empty right hand desperately slaps at the asphalt. While holding the thief pinned, I quickly shoot a look behind me. Don't just stand there. Oh, this policeman is awful. Can't even get this Gucci bag back. The policeman jerks up straight in response to my angry shout. Taking a pair of handcuffs from his pouch around his waist, he runs over to restrain the criminal. The purse snatcher seems to have re resigned himself to his fate and doesn't offer any pointless resistance. He accepts his red-handed arrest for the thief uh, theft docilely, then sits on the ground with his head hung as the policeman radios for backup. Apparently, they weren't too far off as the siren approaches me in no time. That is loud. Wow. That is the loudest siren I, I can't... Okay, stop. Whew. That, that must be regarded as... Oh, that is so loud. That must be regarded as, um, like a voice because, boy, that was up to max. Two policemen get out of the arriving cruiser and push the criminal into the back seat. As I'm quietly watching the scene in perfect passivity, the policeman from earlier runs over. <laughs> Will you let me go now? I'll pass on the letter of thanks, so how about letting me move on? Oh, jeez. Oh, we made it worse for us. Figured as much. Shaking my head in exasperation, I suddenly rebuke myself. Should have just left it alone. As the policeman pushes out my back, a glance at my wristwatch informs me that I'm already five minutes late for my meeting. Dang, man. It sucks. Whoa, that's dope. I like that. 2011. 30 minutes have passed since I was brought to the interrogation room, familiar as the place where criminals break into flop sweat in TV dramas. I'm sitting on a cheap foldable pipe chair, my arms folded in perfect silence. Instead of responding, I close my eyes. A silent statement, indicating I have absolutely no intention of opening my mouth. I, I don't know, man. I think this is an awful idea. The detective clicks his tongue in exasperation at my attitude. I've got a pretty fair idea what he'll be doing next. The sound of something being struck and even louder attempt at intimidation. This is the point where a timid guy would be jumping in his seat with his eyes wide open, or maybe staring at the floor and quivering. As for me, my eyes were still shut, and my arms were still folded quietly. My mind is a total blank. I've been accustomed to adults shouting at me like this since I was a child. Following the threat stage, the next step would be for him to grip my hair and jolt me back and forth. But I'm dealing with an official authority group here. I should get off without direct violent this direct violence this time. Not to say that they won't pull out the old TV cliches and harass me by shining a desk lamp in my eyes or something of the sort. I can roughly translate the detective's sigh. God damn kids these days. I gently open my eyes in order to sneak a look at his disgusted face. The detective sitting in front of me seems to be challenging the Guinness World Record for the most dramatic asymmetry before the left and right sides of the human mouth. Oh my god, I love that. Or maybe he's just scowling. When I let out a snort of laughter in response to the unexpectedly pleasant sight, the detective scratches his head violently and glares at me. <laughs> It won't gain you anything, but you won't lose anything either, except your time. I turn my gaze to the clock on the wall of the sweat box, an hour has already passed since the scheduled time for my meeting. Detective strikes the desk with an excellent comic timing. The best part is the way he knocks his ashtray off the table every time he does this. <laughs> His tone distinctly fed up. He stoops down to pick the plastic tray up off the floor. Kazama Yuji, occupation student. This dude right here. Kazama Yuji, occupation student. 
警察に捕まったらそれしか言うなって誰かに言われてんのかお前どっかのテロリストかカザマユージアキペーションステューデントもういい黙れ First it say something now it shut up Talk about hard to please Our capricious detective scowls yet again and scratches his head Flakes of dandruff grift drift grandly through the air Based on his thoroughly wrinkled suit and heavy stu stubble, jeez, woo, reading. I'd say he hasn't been home in days. Nah, nah, nah. Tanomu yo. Gotchi no jijo mo kangae te kure yo. Another sigh. It's enough to make me want to heave one out myself. Because we both take our work seriously, it seems like we're stuck going around in circles. Sakki no hittakuri jiken no tori shirabe mo susuma nai shi. Yakkai na no tsukamae ta yo, matta ku. So that's it. Just as we roughly complete this exchange of one-sided bitterness and mutual glaring, there's a well-timed knock on the door and the sound of it being unlocked. Hi. Ah, uh, A slightly plump elderly detective enters the room. Given the respectful tone of the detective I've been chatting with, he's probably a superior of some sort. Hi. Hey. Hey. After a quick glance in my direction, the elderly detective whispers something into the younger, younger man's ear. Before long, the younger detective turns towards me with a decidedly nonplussed expression. Why now, all of a sudden? With those parting words, the young detective leaves the room. The elderly detective watches him go and then faces me with a greasy smile. いやすみませんでしたね、風見さん。こちらに連絡がいっていなかったようで、先ほどようやっとあなたの身元保証人の方と連絡が取れた次第でして。I don't even know what a guarantor is. I think it's a guarantor. Detective stares at me with eyes like dead fish. 被害者の関係者なら最初からそう言っていただかない。Whom the heck is Ichigaya? If you'd known I was from Ichigai from the start, wouldn't you have thrown me in jail, stripped me naked, and sprayed me down with a hose? <laughs> hmm. Just to let you know, I'm nothing but a student. My work at Ichigai is a part-time cleaning job. Hmm. In response to my words, the detective twists his mouth into something vaguely resembling a smile. Yeah, <laughs> Sarcasm drifting from every pore of his body, the detective treats me with transparently insincere curiosity, or courtesy. He's perfectly civil on a superficial level, but the atmosphere in here is growing increasingly unpleasant. The younger detective from before, hard-ass that he was, seems infinitely preferable. Did you inquire to Ichigaya about me? Yeah, <laughs> Okay, okay, I think I see where this is going. Since you found my owner and confirmed that my leash is properly attached, I should be able to leave now, right? Oh. Are they gonna Are they gonna give me a tardy for being late on my first day? That's so. Okay. So I'm a pretty big deal is what you're saying. Where's my backpack? You're not getting funds from public taxes in order to chauffeur bums like me around, are you? I'll walk. 
Okay, that was a surprising answer. I'd take the car. After I emerged out the door by the old man, the young detective appears from the rear, carrying the backpack they'd taken from me earlier. I, I am so sure there's a human in there. Bit of a tough question. I guess you could say, my life. Oh, because it's your wife? <laughs> that wasn't really what I was going for. Dropping the backpack next to me, the detective lets out a slight sigh. Thanks for lugging it out here. Pretty heavy, isn't it? True. Guess that's natural for a policeman. Sorry. Detective smiles wryly. The landfill academy? As in, it's built on a landfill? Or uh, you mean it's it's trash? I'm wearing a school uniform. You can see that at a glance. He claps my shoulders as we pass each other. With those parting words, he heads back into the police station. Guess I don't make a convincing student yet. I'm wearing black slacks and a short sleeve dress shirt, as well as a blue tartan, uh, tartan check necktie. Excluding my somewhat longish hair, I should be the very image of a student. I guess it's a little difficult turning into something like that all of a sudden. But it's probably precisely because this is difficult that I decided to give it a try. For a while, I myself didn't understand why I'd been asked that for this, but now, I think I have a faint grasp on the reason. I wanted to become something I couldn't understand, something that I wasn't. At the moment, I've done nothing but smooth down my edges a bit. Perhaps later on, I'll become a student on the inside as well. The sun that has been climbing upward earlier has now reached its zenith. The temperature keeps on rising and sweat oozes from my skin. I was pretty sure she'd pick me up, but huh? Sensing a presence, I lower my gaze from the sun. My eyes, well accustomed to high contrast lighting, project a human form in silhouette for only the briefest of moments before the details fade in. I like those glasses. Also, you're a hoge. A woman raising an awkward salute, grinning broadly, stands before my eyes. Spare me. I don't want to see a pose like that outside the workplace. In the first place, what's with the dopey salute? The girls in the bikini on the maritime SDF. SDF? Like, something defense force? Uh, recruit posters of more impressive form. Dang. I don't recall contributing enough to society today to deserve any appreciation. She opens the door of the car, stop next to her. Yeah, true enough. Alright. From Mishima Cape Police Station, National Highway 133 southbound, we proceed to the Prefectural Highway and advance further toward the Cape. A range of slowly rotating wind turbines come into view, indicating our proximity to the sea. I doubt you really thought I was sick. You were trying the police stations first, not the hospitals. Accuracy in weather forecasts and interpersonal communications make society run smoother. <laughs> he is kind of... I, I do get a feeling that this dude browses Reddit, if you know what I'm saying. Pouting again, she continues her... That is a brand new word! Yo, I'ma Google this. Harangu. Harangu. What is this thing? Uh, it is... Harang. Harang. A lengthy and aggressive speech, or a lecture at length in an aggressive and critical manner. Thank you for teaching me a new word. They say, if you learn one new word a day, you'll know a lot of words by the time you die. I don't know the second half of that statement. <laughs> Ah, 
I don't trust trains. I've seen enough crashes on our watch people die. Sorry, I hate trains. I, was I right? Was I super right? Could you not mention this to the other students? I don't want them getting funny ideas about me from the get-go. I got enough of that from the police to last me a while. Are we really doing this shot here? Are we really? That is so blatant. The car proceeded about 500 meters along an area of reclaimed coastal land after, before being brought to a stop. So that's what they meant by landfill, I see. As I'm recalling the words of the detective from before, the woman continues her conversation with a suddenly cheerful tone. <laughs> There's no school for five kilometers around us. Very nice. Barely even looks like a school. It looks like a jail, if you ask me. I'm gonna be real. Although I'd heard it was a new school, its, its external appearance genuinely isn't what I expected. A three-story building, the pure white color of the outer walls is the only typical school-like environment element, with every other aspect closely resembling a city office building. The gates to the right and left are less evocative of a school gate than a functional fence at some facility. The mounted signboard, likewise, is a utilitarian thing printed in simple typeface rather than a hand-drawn work of calligraphy. I've only just arrived at this place. If I said I was deeply moved by the sight, it'd be a lie. With an exaggerated sigh, she opens her hands wide in an overblown gesture of a third-rate actor. Normal, huh? Oh my god, yes, give me this English! Her rigmarole, I love that word, is abruptly interrupted by the pitch, high-pitched shrieks of two girls. That sounds like me trying to do voice acting. Normal, huh? Normal? Normal? Is the word normal? <laughs> normal? Could you define that term? Is there a class where we chase around each other brandishing insects? I don't think I do, but it's nice to see that it's a lively school. Having apparently forgotten what she was planning to do with her outspread hand, she totters through the school gate. I do like the writing on this. This is a good, it's a good translation. It's one that I, I am enjoying reading the words of. And that's an important thing for a visual novel, because that's the game. Her office is positioned quite near the school building's front entrance. The furniture is nicely arranged, based around an old-fashioned desk and chair. In contrast to the incongruity of the building's external appearance, this room is a textbook example of the old-fashioned principal's office. God, I would... 
Can you imagine a principal office this big in a school nowadays? I can't. Like, here? Hi, I'm a teacher. Principal's offices are like closets. They're tiny. I've never seen one. This is the size- this would be a nice classroom size. I sit on the genuine leather sofa- where do they get this money from? <sighs> That's a, one of the room's more prominent furnishings. After waiting for me to settle myself, she lowers herself into the seat across from me. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. On a practical level, nice to meet you might be the better option. With a slight amused smile, Principal Tachibana takes out a pamphlet. I'm curious as to what this means about meeting her again. She flips past a couple of pages of the brochure. I hadn't noticed, but her fingernails are lightly polished, and I just got an item from Steam. Thank you, Steam. The principal's talk shifts to more detailed matters. The East Beach Express is an enormous corporate group with its hands in real estate and large-scale retail, but its core business is the management of the rail line connecting Tokyo and Haneda Airport. Yo, guess what? I'm actually going to be taking that exact rail line in a couple of days. Ah! Sorry. The EBE's management is shouldered by the Sakaki family, and it seems plausible that the Sakaki Academy Corporation is also administered by them directly, but that's only a guess based on circumstantial evidence. There's a lack of public information on this secretive corporation's corporate uh, activities. The very existence of this academy isn't well known. I didn't gain anything that could be called definitive proof for my investigation so far. Investigation? Her fingers come to a stop, bring her hands gently together, and the principal raises her gaze from the pamphlet and meets my eyes. What does that mean? I have a few questions. First, today is a weekday, but there is barely anyone on school grounds. What's going on? That's not how schools work. Only six? The elite few. That's not a normal school life. That includes our friends with the cicada just now. Question two. Where am I living from today on? Oh. Oh. And let me guess, I am the only dude here. I'm... probably. A dormitory, is it? In that case, not a problem. Before we finish, one last thing. For this last question only, I stare directly into her eyes. I need to confirm the principal's intentions in bringing me here. After all said and done, is this a normal school? The principal closes her mouth. After a moment of silence, she opens it again. A gentle smile. I'm convinced that she isn't lying to me to further some hidden self-interest. I don't, personally. The principal slowly stands up and walks to the window side. The athletic grounds are visible from the window. Although resembling those of a normal school, the grounds are skirted by an improbably high wall. The mere handful of students, the bizarrely extravagant facilities, the on-campus dormitory, the high wall surrounding it all, they clearly indicate abnormality. I guess you're right. The principal turns to face me. 
ここで普通に過ごしてくれればいいわ何かしてほしいとか私から言うことはありません I doubt it understood それじゃ寮の方へ案内するわ Yeah with an otter rise to my feet On the grounds outside a gust of salty sea air kicks up a cloud of sand ここが学生寮よ管理室も含めると部屋数は全部で11各部屋ごとにお風呂とトイレとキッチンが備え付けられてるから生活の心配はないわ家具も一通り揃ってるしね Sounds like Animal Crossing music slightly which is fitting considering we're being given a room Yo Animal Crossing、うん、High School when? The cicada pair from earlier don't seem to be around あスオさんとイリスさんのことね二人ともまだ学園に残っているのかもね小峰さんもいないようだし That Kominina guy is a student here too?、うん、oh, her, there we go. I was gonna say, there's not another guy. There's no way. So you don't have a minute? A minute grasp on the movements of the students, I see. Merely, is it? Knock, knock. Oh no, I'm changing. The principal walks towards the interior of the building. Left there by myself, I stare vacantly up at the ceiling. Soon, I'm unconsciously falling into the habit of counting the number of visible sprinklers, then roughly estimating the scale of the building. That's grim. Calculating the time needed to gain control of the front entrance and ascertaining the location of the emergency exits. Not that many support pillars are there. Yes, that's why the ceiling is a bit low. Oh no! This is. This is him being like a warrior or something. I know. I know. Having grown absorbed in analyzing the building, I don't even notice the tug on my sleeve. I can, and you are kawaii. Until the final excuse me, sumima excuse me, of many finally catches my ear. Huh? I drop my gaze in the direction of the voice and find a girl in housemaid clothing looking up at me. Not that she's a particularly diminutive height, except in comparison to a taller male like me. No one's gonna admit that they're an intruder if you ask them point blank. The scales have fallen? What does that mean? The maid nods several times, slowly closing her eyes and begins to repeat my words. Girl, what's up with you? <laughs> Flexible thinking isn't your strong suit, clearly. No, never mind. So, what does a maid want with me? That'd be the second time today I've heard that pickup line. You're a lot tougher than you look, maid. At this point, having noticed her voices, the principal calls out to the girl. It seems this maid was Komine all along. I'm Kazama Yuji. Good to meet you. I don't think you introduced yourself. And this time, it's nothing but the first name. Hmm. I had this thought earlier with the other two, but you've certainly gathered some, uh, Unique elites here. Which would mean that she's a student too? That's not really my point of conclusion here. Our uniform certainly creates certain preconceptions. For example, if I see a girl wearing bunny ears in a bar, I don't ask what she's done with her Bible. I'm trying to figure out what the heck he's saying. If I see a girl with bunny ears in a bar, don't ask what she's. 
Like, I get what he's saying, but it's a weird metaphor. That's not an explanation, like, at all. Like, that, you're, you're not. That's <sighs> えっと、私はクラスインを任されている関係でよく先生方のお手伝いや雑用をお願いされることが多いのですが、なんだかメイドさんみたいだねという話からちょっとメイド服着てみなよと促され。Oh, cuz that's how it works. I feel like it's someone pushing their uh, interests onto you. I see. You're a, a devoted one. That fallen bunny girl sister could learn a thing or two from you. I don't think that's a compliment. I wasn't really intending that to be a compliment, but there's no point in telling her that. No objections. Yeah, if you would. The maid slowly begins to walk, but quickly comes to a stop in front of the management room. Uh-oh, what's up? Stop dead. She's staring at me with an expression that clearly indicates she has something to say. What's wrong? You need something? Come to think of it, you're right. Well, you can call me whatever you want. We've gotten pretty familiar all of a sudden. Sure. Anyway, I'll call you Sachi. Sachi. My bad, would Sachimon be better? Her expression didn't change in the slightest, but her eyes at the moment she spoke those words had a strange forcefulness. That's so. Alright, Sachi, best regards and all that. Hi. Judging from her smile, it seems she doesn't dislike being called Sachi. Nameplate seems to say it's the management room, though. Oh. Oh. Okay. In other words, she wants me to play the prison guard. Well, at the very least, three out of the six students living in this dorm are females. It'd probably be prudent to have a room as far as possible from theirs to avoid potential trouble, which you can look at in the uncensored version of this game, available as a patch online for free. Mind if I take a look inside? It's gonna be disgusting, I bet. Oh dang, I was wrong. It's the opposite. It's sterile. When I open the door with the key she hands me, a prominently placed kitchens uh, and household a prominently placed set of kitchen and household go goods catches my eye. They seem to be in good shape, and I can confirm with a glance that the room itself will be a more than adequate living environment given my needs. Why this game is obsessed with sprinklers? Got it. She seems to have guessed my thoughts from the direction of my gaze. That is a very large closet. As a little test, I force my eyes on a different point of interest, and she provides an explanation in the same way. Although she's a little off in some departments, she seems to be pretty sharp in other respects. I see. Looks like there won't be any problems. As I speak, I twist the faucet over to the sink. Was someone using this room before I came? The water's pretty clear, considering. We are very investigative, and we still don't know why. I see. I twist the faucet to stop the water, drop the luggage I've been carrying on the spot, and promptly leave the room. I still think there's a human being in there. 
みんなの共有の場所になっています。The、standard student dorm community space, is it? はい。マキちゃんやアマネさんなんかはよくここで過ごしていますよ。That's so. Although I haven't heard those names before, they must be other students. それから、カザミさんの部屋の隣はボイラー室。その正面が階段で、その奥には4つの部屋があって、階段の隣の3号室が私の部屋になります。I'd heard there are 11 rooms in total. Any reason why you picked one on the first floor? それは私の名前がサチなので、サッチャンなら3号室でしょと。Maybe? サッチ、room 3? Okay, they kind of made it work in English. I get the idea. ここが2階です。2階は基本的に部屋のみの構造となっていて、私以外の学生さんは全員この階に住んでいます。Which would mean two of these are vacant. はい、7号室と9号室は現在空き部屋になっています。3階はこの大浴場を始めた戦闘的な構造になっています。Oh、This is the shenanigans room with big windows, huh? 階段の反対側にはコインランドリーや物干しスペースもあるので必要な時に利用してくださいもし洗濯自体が苦手なようでしたら私に言っていただければ代行しますので You are a pushover, huh? Wouldn't taking care of someone else's chores be a nuisance? クラス委員ですから Alright, I'll keep that offer in mind はい There's no reason to refuse outright when the offer is delivered with such an earnest smile By the way, can we use this grand bathroom as we pre- p- prees? As we prees? That's what、はい、I wanted to say. 清掃は専門の業者さんが定期的にやってくれているので、清掃中以外は24時間利用可能です。ただ、男湯と女湯に分かれているわけではないので、風見さんが入浴する際は入り口にこの札をかけるようにしてください。As she speaks, she hands me a card that reads in use male bathing. Sure. I think I might take advantage of it pretty often. The view up here is pretty nice. So, this is the case. I'm going to go to the house. 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 この大浴場を見た大体の人はすぐに入ってみたくなるみたいなので。I see. The fruit of your Garicia <laughs> of your experience, is it? <laughs> What's wrong? えっと、カザミさんのための着替えではなく、私の着替えを持ってきてしまいました。I'll still wear it. As if to demonstrate, female underwear slips out from the clothes in Sachi's hand. Is this a declaration that you want to? To bathe together? I really don't think there's anything to apologize for. Let's see, can I ask about something other than the dorm? In that case, let's hear your th- Buddy! Buddy, you can't do that! Hi, Uekara Hachijuni, Gojuruk, Hachiju Sandes. Jeez, those numbers. At the moment, is there a specific man you're going out with? Imasen. Your experience with men to date? Arimasen. Hmm. I know I'm the one who asks you these questions, but answering them so politely, would it also be because you're the class representative? Krasuin, Mina no Yakuni Tate Koso no Krasuin d e s k a r Was that a test? Was he testing? I don't know. What an admiral devotion to customer service. Wow, she, she answered those without nary a concern. Nothing comes to mind. Got it. With that note of wealth or farewell, Sachi bows like a genuine housemaid and starts to turn away. Ah, Sachi. Hi. Thanks for the tour. I appreciate it. Hi. 
It can't be a visual novel without any piece of genuine, like, being nice. It's like, oh man, now I love you. Uh, class representatives these days seem to be surprisingly tough-willed breed. After Saji's tour ended, I, look a I took another look around the interior of the building on my own. By the time I return to my room, the sun is already low in the sky and the light is growing dim. Should probably put this stuff away before it gets dark. Opening my backpack, I pull out the contents and begin to put them away on the shelves I've been provided with. It's a real help that I've got a closet. Things I can leave in a visible place and things to be stowed away in the back. Dividing my possessions between the two, the latter are clearly more numerous. Normal, huh? While looking over my mountain of luggage, I mutter in a self-deprecating tone, well, I guess there wasn't a human in there. As I work, the sun sinks leisurely into the sea. It's a good soundtrack for this game. Very enjoyable. Hey, it's a school gate. At my usual time, 4.45 a.m., I woke up in my usual way and ran the course I'd marked down mentally on my way here. To tell the truth, when I was stopped by the policeman yesterday, it was because I'd been wandering back and forth in the same place. I've been planning out a possible marathon route, in other words. Okay, interesting. Go for a morning run. I woke up at the usual time, ran at the usual time, and now I'm eating my usual breakfast menu. No different from the days when I was living together with my master in the mountains. Okay, my standard tempo of living. If there is a difference, it's limited to the slight surprise I felt when I opened my eyes and found a roof over my head. During my hike from Yamanishi, I'd gotten used to sleeping in the open, so when I woke up inside a room, there was a slight feeling of unease as I thought, right, I'm living in a dorm now. That mild discomfort hasn't disappeared even now as I'm eating my corn cereal. It's hard to settle down inside a new lair until it's ingrained with your scent. Even so, I'll start living at this tempo, tempo every day from now on, going to school every morning. There's no real need to rush things. If I actively spend every day packing myself with potentially useful knowledge, someday this sort of lifestyle might come naturally to me. The effort strikes me as a little troublesome, but as my master once told me, when it comes to your life and your women, a little bit of trouble is just about right. I don't know about that, man. Speaking of women, oh, oh, that's never a good way to start a sentence. They're a simple bunch, but that doesn't make them any less difficult to handle. I learned that much in my first year living with my master. In my master's words, when you're a brat running fast is not enough to make you popular. When you're a middle schooler, the guys who can fight will be popular. And after that, it's the guys with the brains who get the girls. In other words, run, punch, and read books and you'll never run dry. What do you think? Short and sweet, right? That was her. Her theory. I was wrong. The things she said were always ridiculously simplistic. Honest. Yo, is that the principal? Honestly, I ignored those words with a snort the first time I heard them, but my master was a woman who put her beliefs into practice. Every morning she made me run, and every day she hit me with a stack of books. Although I don't know if she's to blame, I still run 16 kilometers every morning and habitually read books whenever I have free time. Sometimes she was harsh. harsh. Sometimes she was sweet. She would emit an abrasive, overpowering aura at times, but every once in a while she could generate... She could be so gentle, I thought my brain would melt out of my ears. That was my master, a woman with a sizable build who was nonetheless very picky about little things. Are we talking about sizable like she was buff? Was she ripped? I want to see her. I've had a hard time dealing with large women ever since those days. What do you mean large? But being aware of that fact doesn't mean I can't fix it. It's not that I dislike them on a conscious level, but whenever I see a oh, tall, whenever I see a tall woman, I can't help but feel wary out of pure instinct. If you ask me why I'm bringing this up all of a sudden, well... That because I've just reminded that there's a large woman at the school as well. Since this place is a student dormitory, it's of course only natural that a community of students would already be living here. And it's entirely probable they have their own rules that I don't know yet. Also, I'm a country hick, fresh out from the rural areas of Yamanishi, so it goes without saying that I'm poorly versed in the customs and rituals of this land. I have no way of penetrating the depths of significance that might be hidden in an action that, at a glance, looks to be a simple case of bullying. What game is this? What are the rules? Huh? Oh my god, that uniform. No way. That is ridiculous. <laughs> like... Is that actually a fold there that cups under it? Ridiculous. The puzzled faces staring back at me are familiar. 
It's a little girl slash big woman combo. I arbitrarily named the Cicada Sisters when I first arrived at the school yesterday. Who do you think? Oh dang. That's so. I suppose that means I'm irredeemably spooped stupid. Please call me moron, boys, if we've been friends for ten years, Cicada Sisters. Dang! <laughs> I saw the pair of you from the gate yesterday. One of you was swinging a skater around, the other was shrieking, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Hmm. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, because I'm a Yuji. Good to meet ya. I thrust out my right hand, but the tall woman in front of me doesn't show any sign of grasping it. She stiffened up on the st spot, staring fixedly at my face. It looks as though she's for even forgotten to breathe. Something wrong? The big woman's frozen expression suddenly melts and she lightly shakes my hand. It's an unexpectedly small but decidedly cold hand. Iris Machina? I Iris is or er, Iris is a Greek god, and isn't Machina a Latin word? Literally translated, it would mean something like Mecca Rainbow Goddess Dope. What country are you from? Is she just a... Is she just a Westaboo then? Wasn't she speaking English just now? Ah, uh, I see. I see. Well, good to meet ya. Staring at my outstretched hand in silence, Makina clings to Amane's back as if trying to hide herself. What's wrong? Is that the proof that we're the only dude here? Huh. I would draw the hand I've been holding out toward Makina. There's no need to force her to deal with me in the first place, I guess. Isn't don't get any snacks supposed to be an effective threat? Is don't get any snacks supposed to be an effective threat in this day and age? Or so I thought. But hearing those words, Makina bites her lip tightly and extends her right hand toward me with a strained expression. I gently clasp her small hand and put on the natural-looking fake smile I learned from my master. I'm Kazama Yuji. Good to meet you. Her voice is small and marked by a distinct lisp. Her hand is as tiny as her body and it's hot like that of a child. I like dogs. What about it? I'm not really the indecisive sort. I don't hesitate when I need to come up with an answer, even more so when I have an important decision to make. Compared to the failing without even trying, I'd rather take an action even at the risk of a mistake. <laughs> Are you mocking me? <laughs> then why'd you laugh? <laughs> I've heard answering a question with another question is a sign of stupidity. Yo, dang! I like this Amane trick. She's good. Got it, moron girl. 
今はまだ笑ってるけど次呼んだら怒るよ What a troublesome woman あれもう行っちゃうの I don't feel like being late on my first day Oh, this dude's me. It's like there's still an hour left. Yeah, there's an hour in case anything happens along the way. I gotta get going. I'm used to waiting. I'll kill time sightseeing over there or something. I get that a lot. Well, see you in class. What? If it's something I can answer. <laughs> you got something to say, spit it out. No need to hold back. Okay. I see. Huh. Interesting. I don't understand the thought patterns of large women. <laughs> okay, let me take a screenshot of that, because I like that one. I like that one. That's good. That's good. That's in that's in my uh out of context folder. I love it. My master would probably say, if you don't understand by now, you never will. Uh, but my own thoughts are more along the lines of, even if I could understand, why bother? Well then, having said that to Amana, I am confronted with the fact that there are no sights particularly worth seeing here. There's easily an hour until the start of class. I've obviously woke up too early. Well, it's still better than being late, I guess. Might as well wait in the classroom. Right after I mumble those words, just I begin walking down the hallway. Same. What the? As I'm making my way toward the classroom, the principal had described yesterday, here's something resembling a scream. No, not a scream exactly. The hell? Although it doesn't seem to be an emergency situation, I'm certainly a bit concerned by the sound. It's dramatically out of place in this otherwise quiet morning schoolhouse. It's probably a singer warming up her voice. Or a say you. For the time being, I decide to approach. When I peer inside through the hallway window, I find a single woman shouting in the direction of the blackboard. Judging from the fact that she's wearing a uniform, it would seem that she's a student here like Sachi, Amane, and Makina. Apparently oblivious to my presence, she continues her routine. Warming up, yeah, warm-ups, I knew it. After deeply inhaling... John Madden, football! I cannot believe... <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> play that Mario 2 theme. All in one breath, she firmly lets out loose a string of syllables familiar as vocal tuning exercise. <laughs> Can I go back and give that a try? Okay, so. Nope, that's not happening. Never mind. Okay, I'm getting I I'm guessing more I guess she might be going for a voice actress, because it sounds like it. Oh wow, Sundere. While staring at the memo pad in her hand, she awkwardly but forcefully rants off phrases one after another. It seems like I'd do my best to ask what she's doing directly. This is the Broadcasting Club? In response to my questioning, or more likely my entrance, the woman leaps up in shock and draws back a good three meters. Desks and chairs clatter dramatically in her wake. No, I might have been hasty to assume that from the vocal exercises. The drama club seems plausible as well. You seem to be saying some kind of lines. Just as I'm getting ready to rephrase my question, the woman preempts me with my, with her own. Me? Cause I'm a Yuji. I'll be transferring here as of today. Yeah. Nodding, I walk a few steps towards her and stand in front of the woman. So were you doing some sort of rehearsal after all? Sorry if I interrupted. Which is it? I 
I don't quite follow, but if I start asking questions, it'll probably get even noisier, so I choose the path of least resistance. Wait a sec. Wait a sec, Michiru. Front wing. This is anime. This is very anime. Wait a, wait a tick. Wait a heck. Uh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yo, um, uh, wait. I'm looking through my Steam library right now. Real quickly. M, 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 M. Where's my letter M? Did I... Did I play a spin-off of this? Where's... Where is it? Okay, because I'm looking through right now. Okay, let me just type it in. Um... Magical... Wait, where is it? No, I know I have... Okay, so... Idol Girl... Oh! Oh! I totally played! Oh my god, I thought I recognized these characters! I played Idol Magical Girl Chiruru Chiruru Michiru over on one of my, um, Steam things. Wow! I didn't even... I didn't even know that these were connected. So if you go watch my playthrough of, um, uh, go through my, um, what's it called? Steamy goodness list of games that I did. I totally played Idol Magicker Girl Churu Churu Michiru Part 1, and it was incredible. So, ha! Huh. I, whew, okay. After I flopped down on a chair, the woman admonished to herself in a low but perfectly audible voice. And of course, that was before this, so there might have been stuff in there that I didn't even realize was connected. So, I was gonna say, I like this girl already, and that is because I already know she's the funniest. In contrast, she delivers her self-introduction with an artificial brightness. That's so. Initials M.M., huh? I never would have put that together. Nobody said anything remotely like that. Do you want to be called a masochist that badly? Quite an energetic woman. She drops the subject and forges boldly on ahead. What does that sort of mean? Fair enough. Yo, shoutouts to her fang, though. That's some good character design. The woman's voice suddenly grows quieter. I wouldn't call myself an enthusiast. She clears her throat affectedly. What is she do? Template? Is she trying her best to being a Sundari and failing? You want me to call you Michiru, yes? She hums to herself and nods empathetically, apparently satisfied with this result. Next, she takes a colorful wafer of some sort out of a small container and crunches down on it vigorously. What are you eating? Oh, her snack pack, huh? Wasn't asking, I was just wondering what those were. Oh, those are good! That's so. The way you're showing them off, I was pretty sure you wanted me to ask. Oh my god, she's pure Sundari. What is she doing? Is this a school for anime archetypes? I got a strange sense of deja vu from her phrasing just now. 
What was it? One of those long advertisements they put up inside of trains? So don't ride them often. The few I've seen stand out in my memory. Right, they reprinted this idiotic article from a woman's magazine about how to make men fall for you. Purposely treat them coldly at first in order to create a contrast for your affection when you make your move. That's literally Sundere! So you're supposed to be a tsundere? There it is! We called her out! <laughs> Michiru covers her mouth with her left hand and staggers backward in apparent shock. Her reaction is a bit puzzling, but I think I probably hit the bullseye. I see. I think I understand. You're playing a Sundari in an attempt to attract male attention, yes? But there's still some points I'm not clear on, like the hair. Why are you bleaching it? Please, a genuine blonde has a more natural tone, not that artificial looking gold color. I've known a few. That's so? Next time I happen to visit America, remind me to pick you up some better hair dye. She's the best character. So as I was saying, why bleach it? And that hairstyle is a little odd too. It's one that I see... Uh, it's not one that I see that often. It's the twin tails. You gotta do it. The way it has to be. <laughs> hey! Time for another one for my screen cap collection. This is... Truth. Big truth. Sundere is a cursed existence. <laughs> Mitri begins to mumble her words under her breath as if to enumerate the curse's power. I mean, it's wild, because, like, the original Sundere, Tosaka Rin, she's the first, has black hair. And those hair decks, too. That she has to describe the Sundere curse in the first person, she seems a bit strange, but pointing that out would only prolong this, so I leave it be. Michiru jabs out her index finger in my direction and... As she runs out of breath in grand style, the curtain finally drops in Michiru's one-woman show. The echoing of her ragged breathing is the only sound in this otherwise silent classroom. Exactly 30 seconds pass. It's tough being a tsundere. Got it. I'm not sure if that was what... If that wasn't what she was looking for, if she lost the will to go on, but Michiru glares at me while emitting a sound reminiscent of a malfunctioning industrial machine. Anyway, let's get along, Michiru. Yeah, goes without saying. I plan to get along just fine on my own. It really isn't easy being a Sundere, is it? Jeez. <laughs> slap, slap, slap! Finally breaking down, Mitchu begins flinging waste paper, permanent markers, and anything else lying around in my direction in an attempt to drive me off. Are you crying? Sorry, my bad. Oh, she's the best. My attempt at an apology seems to only have fueled her anger, and so in the end, I decided temporary withdrawals, in fact, what called for. Class is starting in another 15 minutes, but I think I should be fine. I'll just kill some time somewhere. Five minutes before the start of class, I'm just gonna go to the end of the class so we can at least see everyone. Uh, practically the moment after I re-enter the classroom, Amane and Sachi arrive. The Sudan from earlier is looking at me with naked aggression, but noticing the arrival of the others... Resuming the performance in question, she promptly calls out to them. Ah! 
The instant her greeting is returned, Michiru runs over noisily and shakes her hands in front of Sachi. Yo, is she a robot? Is she a robot? Michiru, while glancing over the direction for some reason, desperately entreats Sachi. Amani, leaning on her desk, seems to be occupied while trying to hold in her laughter. Yo, she's a robot. The instant Mitri speaks, Sachi's tears abruptly vanish as if someone threw a switch. Mitri watches her cautiously, sweating heavily. <laughs> Mitru staggers away back to his seat with all the vitality of a limper egg. You feeling all right, Mitru sama? <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to give it a try. Mitru collapses weakly onto her desk. Makina's this lisping voice sounds from the rear of the classroom. Seems like she might not be used to my presence yet, judging from the way she beelines straight for Amane and hides herself behind her and steals glimpses at me. Appreciate it, Michiru. <laughs> The fact that she yells it out to herself is the funniest thing. It's not even in her head. She yells it out. Keep up the good work. Apart from the large woman, this bunch seems to present quite a variety of communication difficulties. Nothing but fantastically normal students here, eh, principal? As if in response to my sarcasm with the chiming of the opening bell... The perfectly normal principal appears before my eyes. Oh, wait a second, there's only four. As we've arrived at the beginning of the school day, I notice a difference from the information I've heard yesterday. Standing at the podium, the principal notices the irregularity at a glance. Her tone seems to be asking if anyone's familiar with the circumstances. Well, we can at least look to see what they look like under the uh, systems. No, not system. Under the sounds. Let's see here. So we got Yumiko, purple hair, and Chiziru is that, and JB. Yo, JB is probably our... Uh, She's probably our old master there. Alright. Let's go a bit further. Apparently, I'm not the only one with questions about our lone truant. You're strangely tolerant. From an open window, the scent of the tide flows into the room. Perhaps because of the walls and steel fences surrounding all sides, it's not always easy to remember that this place is in fact close to the sea. In contrast to the breeze and the blue sky's intimidation or imitations of freedom, the grey of those jutting fences speaks of denial and rejection. While my classmates raise their voices energetically, I pass the time staring into that sky. School life, huh? Alright. Well, I think... Oh, cool. That's actually, actually kind of cool. Alright, everyone. We're going to hit that save button. Save here. Ooh, that's nice. It tells you what words are there. And thank you for watching my quick look. Like I said, thanks, Kaiser Sani, for uh, setting me up with this and surprising me that I've actually played the spinoff of this. Um, I like it. Maybe I'll return to it one day. 
Um, I'm actually genuinely, like, really enjoying it. I like the tone. I still gotta know what the mystery about it is. If there's any, like, there's gotta be some, like, magical elements or something. It's, it's gotta be, right? Um, but, uh, if you're interested in your own game, like I said, head on to my Patreon. It's in my description. Uh, put the money in. It is pay immediately, and then, uh, you won't have to pay for the next month because it'll be, like, it'll be done, right? You can pay it once the money's sent. Just stop your subscription, and boom, you just send me a message what game you want to play. Again, anything except, uh, 3DS games, I can probably play it. And, yes, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more player choice games. Ciao.